All right, the Bible says, In the last days there shall be doctrines of devils. There shall be doctrines of devils in the last days. And the Bible also says concerning Satan that we are not to be ignorant of his devices. So it's important to note that in the last days, we are not to be ignorant of what Satan is going to do to deceive the world. Now, one of the wrong doctrines that Satan is really spreading close to the last days is this ecumenicalism. And it's been really promoted especially, if you were to think one person who really promotes this ecumenicalism, or probably the world's most famous preacher, it would be considered Billy Graham. Billy Graham. Now, the thing about Billy Graham is that I actually wrote my master's degree paper about the, his history, and it's very interesting. He used to be fundamentalist like us. He fellowshiped with old-time fundamentalist heroes back then. But then what happened was is that he started to get more ecumenical, and because of that, the fundamentalist preachers, they had to separate themselves from him. Uh, Dr. Upman and Billy Graham, they used to be together one time. And then Billy Graham tried to set up something with him. So during those old days, Billy Graham, he was an uh, old-time preacher. But then when he started to, what, a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. And this guy, I mean, he took the whole lump. Heavy hangs over his head. So we're going to look at some quotes right here from Billy Graham, actually. So one of the things Billy Graham said that was really bad concerning his case with the ecumenical movement. So the first thing which would probably be obvious is the Catholic Church. For the ecumenical movement, what Christians will fall into, the first thing would be the Catholic Church. But then we're going to see this how far you go with the ecumenical thing. And you can only take it so far. In a Larry King Live, this was dated at April 2nd, 2005. This is what Billy Graham said about Pope John Paul II. Uh, quote, the most influential voice for morality and peace in the world in the last 100 years. But this is where it gets boggling, okay? This is what Billy Graham thinks about the Pope. <laughs> now, we know that the Pope, he's going to play a big part in Revelation, right? Part with the Antichrist system. Okay, so this guy is supposed to be part of the Antichrist system. Now, do you think a guy like this is going to go to heaven? Nope. <laughs> Larry King asked, quote, There is no question in your mind that he, the Pope, is with God now. You know what Graham said? Oh no, there may be a question about my own, but I don't think Cardinal uh, Wolchia, I think that's his last name, or the Pope, I think he's with the Lord because he believed. He believed on the cross. That was his focus throughout his ministry, the cross. No matter if you were talking to him from personal issue or an ethical problem, he felt that there was the answer to all of our problems, the cross and the resurrection. And he was a strong believer. <laughs> so Billy Graham, what does he think about the Pope? Saved. What, the guy who's going to be part of the Antichrist system? He's going to heaven? And why are Christian churches promoting Billy Graham? If you have him as your preacher, there's something wrong with you, you got to understand. Alright, here's another one. You know what Cardinal Roger Mahoney did in his letter? <laughs> it's found at his Archdiocese website. This was dated October 6, 2004. This is unheard of. Now think about this. You got a problem if you got a Catholic saying this about you. Quote, When the crusade, so Billy Graham's crusade, was held in other locations, many Catholics responded to Dr. Graham's message and came forward for Christ. Crusade officials, so those are Billy Graham's people who are organizing the crusades, helping these people come on the altar. He said this, Crusade officials expect the same for the Los Angeles area. These officials have assured me. So Billy Graham's officials assured what? The Cardinal, Cardinal Mahoney, 
These officials have assured me that in keeping with Dr. Graham's belief and policy, there will be no proselytizing, and that anyone <laughs> identifying him or herself as a Catholic will be referred to us, the Catholics, for reintegration into the life of the Catholic Church. We must be ready to welcome them. Billy Graham, you know what his excuse is? This is his excuse. That's why people give him a lot of leniency. It's all it's not about which is true. I mean, Billy Graham's not going to be completely dumb. It's not a matter of religion, it's a matter of salvation, right? I mean, we believe that too. It's not it doesn't matter if you're a Muslim, Catholic, Buddhist or something. As long as what? As long as you put your faith in Christ alone for salvation, you're saved. It's not a matter of religion. But here's his problem. We believe that these things are separated. But you see what he does? What he does is this. He doesn't separate the two. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Sure, it doesn't matter which religion, but I'm going to tell you something. You know what salvation is? Salvation is faith in who? Christ alone. Amen. But when you add what? When you add Mary, when you add Mohammed, when you add Buddha, you think you're saved? No, you're not saved. You are not saved. Why? Because John chapter 14, verse 6, it says, Jesus saith unto him, I am what? The way, the truth, and the life. So meaning Jesus is the only way, the only way to heaven. If you go through any other way, you're going to hell. So hit Billy Graham's excuse is, look, it doesn't matter about religion. I'm just, my point is to make sure they get saved. That's why it fools a lot of people. Well, that's good. But see, his problem is this. When these people are coming down, giving their life to Jesus Christ, supposedly that's their salvation, right? But here in those invitation to salvation, Graham said this. Anyone identifying him or herself as Catholic will be referred to us. That's what the Cardinal said. The Cardinal assured the people, if these Catholics go to the Crusades, they're not going to proselytize them. Don't worry. They're going to refer them to our church. So I'm going to tell you something. When Graham boasts about all these people that got saved, you'd be surprised how many of those numbers are not true then. Amen. They're going to hell. You know why? Because Graham, he doesn't go against Catholicism. People are mixing their belief with their salvation. If you don't distinguish that, they're going to hell. Amen. They are going to hell, no matter what people say. Okay, this is funny. President Nixon, he was even more, if you're more ecumenical than Nixon, <laughs> and you're more ecumenical than Bush, don't you think you got a serious issue? Okay, listen to this. This is Graham in his book, Just As I Am, page 450. In early December, I left to spend the Christmas holidays visiting our troops in Vietnam. I just got back just in time for the inauguration. Nixon, Nixon wanted me to do all the prayers at the swearing-in ceremony. Yeah, it should be uh, only him, but I objected. Why would Graham object? This is what Graham said. Dick, you've got to have all faiths represented or you're going to have problem. No, I just want you, he insisted. Nixon said, I just want you. Hey, if someone did that to me, I'd be the only one, actually. I wouldn't include any other religion. Eventually, Nixon gave in to the ecumenical idea. Wow, you got a problem, man. You think this guy's a great preacher? No, he's crummy. If you're worse than Nixon, you've got a problem, man. Here's Bush. It's the same book, page 592. At his inauguration in 1989, George Bush invited me to lead the various prayers during the public ceremony. I protested at first, pointing out that it was customary to have a clergy from other traditions participate also, often a Jewish rabbi, a Catholic priest, and perhaps an Orthodox leader. He, Bush, remained adamant, however, saying he felt more comfortable with me. Besides, he added, he didn't want people to think he was just trying to play politics by having representatives of different faiths. 
You got a problem, man, if you're worse than Bush? You got a problem, man. Here's another thing you got to realize. Before we blame our presidents for really intermingling with the face, think about this. Maybe that would not have happened if Graham didn't encourage those earlier presidents to do that. So perhaps Billy Graham is the one who's causing the apostasy in America rather than contributing to the spiritual growth of America. Ever thought about that? That word that he stated affected history, you've got to understand, with presidents. He's got a lot to say to God, man. All right, but, okay, uh, how low can you go, right? How low can you go? Oh, it can get worse, all right? You, you know how far you can go? Unbelievers. So, yes, people who are not Christians, people who don't believe in the same God, so, this can include atheists who don't believe in God. This can include what? Muslims. This can include Buddhists. Wait, what do you mean, Pastor? What's he going to say? I'm not going to tell you now. I'm going to quote it to you. Listen to what he says about these people. You ready? You can only stoop so low. This is Schuler. Tell me, what do you think is the future of Christianity? Graham. Well, Christianity and being a true believer. Listen. True believer, you know, I think there's the body of Christ. This comes from all the Christian groups around the world outside the Christian groups. I think everybody that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And I don't think that we're going to see uh, that a great sweeping revival that will turn the whole world to Christ at any time. I think James answered that. The Apostle James in the first council in Jerusalem, when he said that God's purpose for this age is to call out a people for His name, and that's what God is doing today. He's calling people out of the world for His name. So here's his point. His point so far is it doesn't have to be Christian. It can be anybody around the world that will be part of the saved body of Christ. He's calling out people out of the world for His name, whether they come from the Muslim world, or the Buddhist world, or the Christian world, or the what? Non-believing world. Did you hear that? Or the non-believing world. Not even people who believe in uh, religions or some sort of God. So yeah, practically atheism you can put in there. They are members of the body of Christ because why? They've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus, but they know in their hearts that they need something that they don't have. And they turn to the only light that they have. And I think that they are saved and that they're going to be with us in heaven. Hogwash! That's at an interview with uh, Billy Graham with Robert Schuller. It was dated at May 31st, 1997. So you know what his point is? His point is, is that everyone has some sort of spiritual thing that they're seeking for in their life. Hey, even atheists too. Atheists would even seek for something, some kind of light that they would go for in their life. And Graham thinks that those kind of people will go to heaven. How far can you go? How far can you go? Look at 2 Corinthians 6. So he calls them, so he says non-believers too, right? He says non-believers. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We will read verse 14. The Bible completely says the opposite. The Bible says right here, Be not unequally yoked together with who? Unbelievers. So God says don't be yoked with unbelievers. And our unbelievers, look at what Graham said. Graham said unbelievers are seeking after for some light, right? Did, does God think that they're part of the light, these unbelievers? Keep reading. Verse 14. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath what? Light with darkness. So no, God says no, these guys are not part of the light. Okay, remember what Graham said? They are seeking after Christ, even though they don't know that name. No, keep reading. The verse says, And what concord hath Christ with who? Belial. See? God says no. You know what God says these people are? Darkness and of Satan. Amen. 
So Billy Graham, you got to avoid that man. That man is worse. This guy is worse than Joel Osteen. This guy is worse than all the false preachers out there. That's how you become the world's most famous pastor. It's become worse than all of them together. So you stay away from this man. This man is teaching a doctrine of the devil. And you know what's really sad is that if you look at his history, he really looked like a saved man. That is evidence right there that a saved Christian can be capable of doing worse things than the worst kind of people. That's right. This guy is going to be butt naked at the judgment seat of Christ, no matter how many souls he has led to salvation, because he led many more into damnation. He damned America. That man should be preached against. I don't care how old he is, how I should be considerate of his health. Man, that guy, he's got a lot to answer for. 